I don't think they have a counterspell. It is time for Star Storm. That's X3. So there's a whole bunch of Taralf triggers. Today on Commander Replay, we check out three games with Taralf, God of Fury, and find out just how strong Taralf plus a burn spell can be. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, next time you purchase cards, if you want to support me and my LGS, be sure to check out MothershipATX.com and use the promo code REPLAY to save 15% on your next order. And if you can't find what you're looking for, you can use the TCG Affiliate Player link. All links are in the description below. We're going to start this off with just a quick highlight from game one. Basically what happened is, opponent played a Blasphemous Act for science, and when Taralf's in play, that's absolutely insane. Two players are going to end up dying as a result of that Blasphemous Act. So basically none of the things that happened before that in the game actually matter once that happens. And there you see the players going down. That leaves Zombie left in the game, he's playing Kardur, and he's gonna drop a Warp World, and that's gonna make things a little bit interesting. But we end up with a Sword of Sinew and Steel, and he ends up with a couple red creatures, so that's basically the difference in the game. And shortly after that, he ends up scooping, so that's game one. That gives you an idea of the power of Taralf. Even if an opponent plays a Blasphemous Act, you're gonna be so unbelievably far ahead, and likely one or more opponents will die. So with that, let's go on to game two. Welcome back everyone, game two with Taralf, God of Fury. Uh, it's not the best hand I've ever seen, but I think we can make it work, let's keep. It's got lands, it's got a mana doubler, it's got card draw and protection. It's got this Forbidden Orchard, which I want to try out, so. Brings it to our turn one, Mask of Memory, one of my favorite cards, makes this hand much better. Play the Volokut, pass the turn. Opponent's got an Ameria into play, yeah, those are nice. Ooh, and a Carrion Feeder coming in. Brings it back to our turn, ooh, that's a Neheb, Neheb's cool. I'm gonna start playing Mountains because we have that Gauntlet of Might in our hand. We'll wait on the Forbidden Orchard. Get the Mask of Memory. Mask of Memory for opponent. Very nice. Oh, that's a Cole. Cole the Forge Master, yeah. Been meaning to check that one out. We'll get there eventually on the channel. Anyway, let's take a look at what we're playing. So we're playing Taralf, God of Fury. Four mana, five, four. It's got Trample. It says, whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage. Taralf deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent. And on the back side, we've got Taralf's Hammer. Two mana to cast, two mana to equip. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus oh, as long as it's legendary, and you may pay two. Unattach it. It deals three damage to any target. Return the hammer to its owner's hand. Today we'll be primarily focused on the front side of Taralf. And basically big burn spells and death touch is the name of the game. Uh, something like a Blasphemous Act with a few creatures in play can basically just win you the game, in more or less words. Taralf is pretty insane. And what's crazy too is that it's also insane against opposing Blasphemous Acts. If someone else plays a Blasphemous Act, like, you can probably kill at least one player. It's so ridiculous how good this thing is. Ooh, nice opponent. Played a Gravecrawler, sacked it, put a counter on this thing, and then recast it. So it's back in play. And they're sending the 2-2 our way. Yep. Got a little combo going there. Boros Garrison for opponent. Gonna have to pick up a land. Brings it back to our turn. Basilisk Collar, also a good card. Play the Mountain. Play the Fire Nice. Pass the turn. Call the Forge Master coming into play. We should take a look at that one. I'm excited about that one. Hopefully we can see what they're doing today. Two mana for a 2-2. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, return it to its owner's hand. Creature tokens you control that are enchanted or equipped get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So uh, I think the big thing there is a lot of people are talking about like CEDH level combo with that. Basically, if you get a sack outlet and a free creature, uh, you've got yourself infinite triggers right there. And there's a few other ways to go about that combo, too. You could look at stuff like Dockside Extortionist, any creature that makes mana, uh, cost reducers, like any of the medallions. We'll also add a number of combo pieces to the equation, but uh, has the potential to be very strong. I haven't seen it in action yet. We'll see what opponent's doing. I'm not sure exactly which build they're on today, but yeah. I uh, got some attacks going over to Maru Powell. Yeah, that's a Dockside Extortionist. Yep. Uh, looks like three. I would take a Dockside for three. Spends the treasures, gets themselves an Ilharg. Nice. Brings it back to our turn. There's a Mage Bane armor doubling up on all of these uh, effects here. So, uh, yeah, maybe we play the Forbidden Orchard, cast our commander. Forbidden Orchard will give it to Sean, I guess. And we'll pass like that. Hope our thing survives back to our turn. Luckily, there's some other scary stuff on board right now, so I don't know that opponent's going to perceive us as the threat. Uh, they weren't in the last game with us to see what happens with Taralf. 
Continuing on our opponents, by the way, our second opponent is D Manny piloting Ghoul Caller Gisa. Five mana, three, four, pay a black, sacrifice another creature, create X, two, two black zombies where X is the sacrifice creature's power. Pretty cool commander. I haven't seen it a ton over the years. Looks like they're doing a zombie tribal thing. Definitely going to be a sweet zombie tribal commander. Ooh, that's a smothering tithe. Definitely a lot of options when it comes to zombie tribal, but that's definitely one of them. If you like sacrifice and stuff, if you like doing things with grave crawler, definitely a cool way to go. And, you know, you got to be careful with something like that because they can just overrun you with tokens. However, tokens will play really well into what we're trying to do. A blasphemous act with a lot of tokens on board means everyone dies. Smothering Tide trigger for opponent. Mogus Marauder coming into play. It's a human berserker. Enters the battlefield up to X target creatures gain intimidate and haste, where X is your devotion to black. Pretty cool. So everything's got haste and intimidate. Two coming our way, and the other two are split. Obun, Moldaya Ancestor coming into play. Yep. Landfall trigger. Gets a counter. Turns a land into a creature. Or is that the upkeep? Nope, that's at the beginning of combat. It turns a land into a creature. Uh, Ilharg coming our way. Yep. Dockside to D-Manny, token to D-Manny. 4-4 four, four over to Cole. Ancient Greed Ward, ooh, yeah. Ancient Greed Warden in off of the Ilharg, and that's going to get us for 5. Returns at the end step. Brings back to our turn, there's a Bonders Enclave Smothering Tithe trigger. Not paying. Equip the sword. Equip the mask. Send this in to D-Manny. I'm going to shoot the coal as much as I really want to see the coal. They do have a Smothering Tithe, so like... Recasting it will be easy for them. Should slow them down like just a teeny bit. Oh, that's a ruby medallion and a gold span dragon. Yeah, those are good. We need to discard a card. Let's discard. Ooh, I like the Bonders Enclave. You know, the Mage Bane armor is a bit redundant with the Fire and Ice, assuming the Fire and Ice doesn't get blown up. Uh, this all triggers the Smothering Tithe a bunch of times. Yeah, so they'll have all the mana to recast their commander. They will be fine. That's an Underworld Breach. Pretty crazy card. Not paying. Play the mountain. Play the ruby medallion. Uh, I'll give Sean another 1-1. One, one. This deck needs a faithless looting. One thing we need right now is a big burn spell. This deck is not at all tuned, by the way. Uh, one of the questions in building the deck is, like, how many creatures should you run? Should you just go all in on spells and, like, ritual type effects and stuff like that? Don't know yet. Don't know. Probably depends on how strong you want to make it. If you want a bit more balanced gameplay, have a few more creatures. If you really just want to be like, sort of like the Neheb deck, just all in combo, go as fast as possible, then rituals, lots of spells, basically just get your commander, get the thing that wins the game, and uh, call it a day after that. Now, it does require that your opponents have creatures in play, so if you run into like a Demir deck or something that isn't running tons of creatures, that's going to slow you down, and something you may have to account for, but... I want to get some things, so Grand Abolisher, Kazul's Toll Collector, and Aura of Silence all into play. Pretty good stuff right there. Equips the Mask. Aura of Silence has the potential to mess us up pretty good. We have uh, three artifacts and enchantments in hand, and would prefer not to lose any of the ones that we have in play currently. One has a Nykthos, and uh, it's only making one extra mana so far, which isn't too bad, but one more thing into play, and they'll be getting some decent extra mana. I will say this deck is really bad at blocking in its current state. I want a board wipe before the big play, and then another one after when we time to get set up. Uh, there comes Ghoul Caller Gisa. Yeah, there are zombies. Two going on the attack, gonna ding us for three more. So, with the Ruby Medallion and Goldspan Dragon, Dragon making a two mana treasure, that means that we will have essentially paid two mana for the Goldspan Dragon, which is really cheap. Seems pretty crazy to me. Our final opponent, by the way, is Sean Milk and Cheese 1 piloting a boon Moldaya Ancestor from the Precon of Zendikar Rising. And he's been playing this Precon a little bit. The Precon deck construction itself is fine, but the commander itself is powerful enough that it doesn't take much to really power this deck up. So if that's something you like, let me know in the comments below if you want to see me do something with a boon. But also, the deck just spits a lot of power into play quickly. Like, he's always got some army of big threatening things. It's turn six, so it's not terribly late. That's an aggravated assault. Better watch out for that. Next turn, that will do some things. Uh, combat trigger, turn a land into a creature, but it's tapped. Does it untap it? It does not untap it. Thank god we're liable to take some damage this turn. Yep, that's everything our way. This might kill us, actually. Haven't done the math yet. Opponent's gonna shoot the aggravated assault. That's actually great news for us. Problem will become, let's see, that's 10, 11, 12, nope, oh, that's an Aheb. Are we dead? 14, 
might be at one. We're at one, and Neheb makes seven. Oh, wow. Oh, they shot that aggravated assault just in time. Oh, that pans out. <laughs> the aggravated assault, that would have gone infinite. 17 red mana. Let's see how they want to spend it. Brings it back to our turn. That's a Jessica's will. I'm sure that's going to be super helpful. Not paying for the Smothering Tithe. Uh, let's get this Basilisk Collar into play. It does have lifelink. Uh, play the Bonders Enclave. Equip the Basilisk Collar. Uh, we'll give Maru a token. Go to combat. Swing it, Sean. So we go back up to seven, thankfully. Uh, fire an Ice Trigger. Shoot the... We need a one toughness creature. So shoot one of these tokens. Mask of Memory. Draw two with Mask. Uh, Past in Flames, Goblin Spy Master. I have nothing else. The Spy Master is a blocker. Might need to keep that handy. Maybe discard the Gauntlet of Might. I want it, but it's just going to be tough. The board doesn't get wiped right here. So we shoot the 1-1, one, one, which triggers Taralf. Taralf will do one excess damage to a thing, except Taralf has Death Touch, which means we can take down this Ilharg, which has been causing some problems for us. We draw a Pyromancer's Goggles. Not exactly what I was looking for. And it's another Smothering Tithe token. Ilharg goes down. Shuffles into the library. Uh, play this Jessica's Will using both modes for five. And that'll only be two mana to cast, which is pretty sweet. Uh, Dark Steel Plate Genesis Chamber. I've already played a land, sadly. Hmm. We could Underworld Breach and try the whole thing again? We need a... Uh, ooh, we don't have enough cards in the graveyard for Underworld Breach in this exact second. So I'm thinking maybe, like, Genesis Chamber... Spy Master would be two. Uh, we could get in a Heb, I think. Heb's a pretty solid blocker, actually. That'll trigger the Genesis Chamber. And we'll pass like that. So we just need to survive, which may not be the easiest thing, but if we can, then we can, like, either pass in flames or Underworld Breach, get back the Jessica's Will, dig more, get more mana. If we get the Pyromancer's Goggles in first, we'll be able to do some real wild stuff. But I wouldn't mind if, like, the zombie player just dropped a board wipe or something, but I don't know that they would, given how many creatures they have. They'd be more likely to just, like, flesh bag Marauder or Dictate or something like that. Mask Memory Trigger for opponent. Pure Steel Paladin for opponent. Triggers the Genesis Chamber. Stoneforge Mystic. Genesis Chamber. Skull Clamp. Oh, Skull Clamp's insane with Genesis Chamber. They have so much mana. Well, maybe they'll make themselves a threat. That would be ideal. Opponent draws up to seven. Soul Ring. Cole back to play. Genesis Chamber. There's a Cobalt. Yep. They are about to go off. Skull Clamp. That is infinite card draw with six mana. Is that a good game? Yeah, opponent says it's going infinite. There's an Enlightened Tutor for Impact Tremors. I don't think Taralf's going to help us there, is it? Yeah, we can scoop it up there. Opponent's got the infinite, so Cole going to take this one down. Welcome back, everyone. Game three with Taralf, God of Fury. This looks like a fast hand. We'll go ahead and keep this. We have two mana. Uh, I tinkered with the deck a little bit. So I changed it from more of a, like, well-balanced creature kind of deck to... Now we're going to be a bit more fast all-in combo. Similar to the way that Neheb might play, where we've got a lot of rituals in the deck. Not a lot of creatures anymore, so we're really just about trying to get to Taralf and the big burn spell. And that's the name of the game. So lots of fast mana. Uh, lots of rituals, lots of loot effects, wheels, draw effects, that type of thing. So honestly, not my favorite way to play. I'm not big on the all-in red combo style commanders. I do tend to prefer a more balanced game. I like having removal. I like having answers to problems, and that's not what the really powerful red commanders give you. Uh, it's usually do the thing as fast as you can, hope no one interacts. That's usually what you get out of the red decks, so... Uh, I told opponents to bring some strong decks, and indeed they did. We are facing Obun, which we've seen in all the prior games so far. Uh, Tatiova out of Brando. Yep, that's going to be a good landfall deck. And then finally, Chulain out of Mango. Also going to be really strong. Yeah, that's some stuff. Uh, we do need two red to get to Taralf, so I am going to go Mountain instead of Ancient Tomb right here. Uh, play the Mountain. Play the Soul Ring. Play the Walking Atlas. And next turn... We will have a lot of mana. A lot, a lot of mana. We'll have to uh, decide also if we want to ramp with the Walking Atlas or if we want to use the Mask of Memory on it. Probably the ramp because the ramp is very valuable, especially on, like, turn two. Soul Ring for opponent. Yeah, this is going to be a fast game, I think. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Pretty good card. I wish I got those when they were cheap. 
They never got super cheap, and then they started going back up, and uh, never got one while that happened. I have multiple five-color decks in paper, and uh, all of them have budget mana bases, and uh, that's the type of card that helps you out a lot <laughs> when you have something like that going on. Brings back to our turn. Skyclave Relic. More ramp. Yeah, I think we'll go on the hard ramp plan right here. So activate the Walking Atlas. Use that to drop in the Ancient Tomb. Play the Mountain. How much total mana is that? That's three, four, five, six. It's enough to kick the Skyclave Relic, so I think that's what we do. That creates two tokens, one mana left, nothing to do with the one mana. Pass like that. We have ramped. Lotus Cobra in for opponent. Yep. Tatiova into play. Yep. Dryad the Elysian Grove into us. Yep. I've noticed that this deck is really bad at blocking. <laughs> That's been a giant problem. So if opponents just play creatures and you don't get to the burn spell first, they just attack you and you die. Growth Spiral for opponent. Gets a land. Vryn Wingmare in for our opponent. That actually is uh, a little nasty against us. There's a Starstorm. All right. I doubt... Yeah, I doubt that they would block... You know, they definitely won't block with the Lotus Cobra. Lotus Cobra, way too good for... Tell you what, Mask of Memory, much worse when you gotta pay three. Mask of Memory coming in. Equip the Mask. Send that over to Sean. Mask of Memory trigger. Perfect. Dowsing Dagger, Chandra's Incinerator. Oh my. Um, those are cards. Give her to the Spy Master, I guess. Let's get Taralf into play. Uh, don't have enough for the Dowsing Dagger because it costs three. Pass like that. I haven't worked out exactly what it means, but... Chandra's Incinerator and Taralf are going to be insane together. I don't think it's completely infinite. I don't think infinite's the right word, but definitely insane. Opponent plays a Bounce Land. Landfall trigger. Opponent passes, doesn't have anything to do with the mana. Zendikar's Royal coming into play. That makes tokens. We like tokens with this deck. Lotus Cobra in for opponent. Yep, they are set up. Opponent doing some attacks. Nothing our way, though. Vryn Wingmare into us. Yep, nothing we can do about that. Opponents are tapped out. I'm feeling good. We can make a big play this turn, I think. That's a buy force. Let's go to combat. We can't really move the mask because we're a little jammed on mana. I'm going to go no Dowsing Dagger this turn. Eh, maybe we should win Dowsing Dagger. I don't know. Mask of Memory trigger. Do some looting. There's lands. Lands are good. Drop the buy force. Play a Rogue's Passage. We could play... Star uh, here's the choices. We could try to get the Incinerator, and then whenever we do damage to opponent... Incinerator will do damage back to a creature, and that'll get kind of wild, or we could just go for a big Star Storm. Maybe we just go for a big Star Storm. Well, or the thing is we could go for a Star Storm X3, and that'll get us a lot of triggers. Let's play the Incinerator. This doesn't feel like a board wipe kind of game. I mean, we've ramped so much also that, like, if a board wipe happens, then... Well, if an emergency arises, we will Star Storm for X1. Ilharg coming into play. Ooh, Maloku. Return a land you control, create a 1-1. One, one. They're going to do that. More bodies. More bodies for the Star Storm. Landfall, Lotus Cobra, Tatiova, Zendikar Royal. Another landfall. Sylvan Tutor gets an Avenger of Zendikar. Hope that's not counterspell mana. 3-3 three, three over to Chulain. 2-4 over to Chulain. 2-2 two, two over to Chulain. They go down to 26. There is some concern that, like, I don't know the exact combo line in Chulain, but I know it can just, like, value hard. Hopefully they don't go wild this turn. Ah, uh, that looks like a bunch of interaction, is what that looks like. Which means wait on the Star Storm until, like, things are tapped out, probably. Scroll Rack is a magic card. Uh, play the Dowsing Dagger. Dowsing Dagger, who's getting tokens? Uh, they've already got so many tokens that it's kind of wild. Dowsing Dagger on Taralf. Mask of Memory on Taralf. Swing over to Chulain. He's gonna flash in a White Main Lion. That's not the end of the world. He can ramp like crazy, though. So he bounces the white main lion to itself. Does it again. Does it one more time. I guess they're drawing cards when they're doing this, too. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, like, he could be just trying to find interaction. Hopefully he doesn't find it. That is some serious ramp, though. We'll probably have outramped the Tatiova deck by the time he's done. This game's been moving kind of quick, though. Okay, so they tap out, thankfully. Uh, Mask of Memory and Dowsing Dagger. Yeah, let's go in that order. So flip the Dowsing Dagger, get some mana back. Loot with the Mask of Memory. Ooh, Ruby Medallion's a card. Uh, not a lot of mana rocks this game. We'll get rid of the Treasure Nabber. Play the land. Do we go on the big burn right here? Uh, I, you know, I'd really rather wait until uh, that mana's tapped. So pass like that. Here comes Obun into play. Sure. Another body. 
Another body for the burning. Landfall Lotus Cobra. Yep. Opponent doing some attacks. Sure. Ilhar coming into play. Gets a Endraise Forerunners. Surprise. They just got bigger. Oh, the Endraise is coming our way. We'll just take that. Ooh, opponent's going to double block. Not looking to... Wow, they go down to eight. Uh, Vryn Wingmare is gone. That's a big deal. I hope opponent uses Maloku at the end step here. Oh, they're going to grow spiral. They're down to one mana. I don't think they have a counterspell. It is time for Starstorm. Here's the question. Do we just go all the way with it? If we did, let's see, that'd be... That would be X7. I can't tell if we should, like, go X5 to keep the Incinerator alive, or go X7, or go X3 to keep Taralf alive. Uh, those are kind of the things that I'm wrestling with. I'm going to try X3 for the Taralf Incinerator interaction. I don't know if that's better than just going X all of our mana. That's X3, because I really want to see how this interaction works. It's kind of just one of those things you need to see one time. So there's a whole bunch of Taralf triggers. Now, the problem is you can't tell how much damage uh, each one of these does beforehand. But I think if we just use, shoot everything in the face, that's a one damage trigger. That's a two damage trigger. That's a three damage trigger. That's a one damage trigger. Two damage. One damage. What's that? That's three, four, five, six, seven. And that'll be eight. And send these over here. We then start getting incinerator triggers, which will do this much damage to a... I think that's a one damage trigger. So we need... We want to be getting excess damage. We can kill the target creature or planeswalker, the damaged player... Oh, the damaged player, huh? Okay. Shoot that thing then. There's a two damage trigger. So that does two to that. And now we get a Taralf trigger. That leaves us with one excess. Shoot that thing. Ilharg dies. Why didn't incinerator trigger again right there? Whenever a source... I'm very confused. I thought that would do more. It still cleared the board and killed a player. Like, that's how strong this is. I'm sure if I read this better, probably could have got more done with it. But uh, opponents still have to rebuild, and uh, that's going to be a pain in the butt for them. We're still in a very good position. Yeah, I can't tell if that was better than just going X as much as we could. Because that would have killed basically all the creatures, and then I think we would get a bunch of, like, three to four damage triggers left over. Opponent got something back to their hand. I didn't see what. With this Nissa, Sure, we'll find out at the wrong time what it was. There's a growth chamber. Send a card royal. Uh, that's a wheel of fortune. Oh my. Um, I guess play the things in our hand. Actually, let's wait a second. Go to combat. This has trample naturally. That has trample naturally. That to the face. This to the Nissa. They're gonna block. We trample over. Mask of memory. Mage bane armor. Gorgon's head. We'll discard the Gorgon's head. Death touch is cool, but we just cleared the creatures, so... Doesn't feel necessary in this moment. Uh, let's start casting things from our hand. There's Scroll Rack, Ruby Medallion, Mage Bane Armor, Wheel of Fortune, seven new cards. Um, there's a Volcanic Offering. We can cast it if we need to. Probably a good time to actually cast the Spine Rock Knoll. Do that. Uh, that's a Furnace of Wrath. We'll keep that one under there. And I think we'll pass like that. We just need our opponents to have creatures in play now. That's all we're really looking for. <laughs> Burgeoning for opponent. Branching Evolution. If one or more counters will be put on a target creature you control, twice that many. Sweet. Landfall. A question that's probably on some people's mind is, is Taralf better than Neheb? The answer is, I don't know. Ooh, uh, opponent's coming in for a pretty significant amount of damage. We'd only get one excess damage with the Volcanic Offering, but we probably also don't want to take 12, so Volcanic Offering. Uh, we can destroy a land. Let's destroy... I've had some problems with this Emergent Zone. That's a thing that... Has caused me issues in the past. Choose a creature we don't control. Choose this Oboon. Choose an opponent. Let's see if they know to choose the same creature. Because, like, they probably want us to die right here. So, looks like they do choose the same creature. Yep. Yep, they did. They did. Taralf triggers. I don't know how much damage this is. Um, oh, it would probably be one? Yeah, so I think we probably just go to the face. Yeah, it's one excess. Oh, that one's seven excess. That would have killed the land. See, you gotta know how much these triggers are beforehand. Oh, there's an incinerator trigger. Well, I guess the incinerator is gonna take care of it. Okay, so the opponent still needs to have creatures left. When they have creatures left, that'll trigger the incinerator. And that attack has been thwarted. Tatiova back to play for most of their mana. Bunch of landfall triggers. I don't really feel the need to scroll rack anything right here. I feel like we've got the things we want. Just need a little bit of time to execute everything. There's a mountain. Play a mountain. Burgeoning trigger. Mage Bane on this Chandra Incinerator. It's an 810. 
I'm going to send both to Sean. Mask of Memory. Use the ability. He's down to 14. That's a Chaos Warp and an Ignite the Future. Discard the Mountain. I changed my mind. Let's move the Mage Bane over to the Taralf. Then play Chandra's Ignition. Targeting Taralf. Oh, forgot to do one thing. Activate the Spine Rock Knoll first. That's important. This will be 14 damage to everything. Cast the Furnace of Wrath. Now cast the Chandra's Ignition. See if anything survives. Sean dies to the initial trigger. There's an Incinerator trigger. Our Incinerator goes down, though, and then there's some Taralf triggers. I don't know if these are going to finish it. Ah, uh, they do! By a lot, because those triggers also get doubled. Wow. Okay, yeah. Taralf burn. Pretty good. This, uh, this commander is extremely strong. Uh, I'm not sure if it's better in the command zone or better in the 99 of another burn deck. If you're someone that plays a lot of burn decks, if you like Neheb, that's certainly something you can experiment with. Um, I'm not sure which will be more consistent. Sometimes just having a lot of mana in the command zone is really good with Neheb. That's like a hard thing to give up. Although the things that Neheb want and the things that Taralf want are slightly different. Still, there's going to be a lot of overlap amongst those cards. Neheb likes a lot of the do three damage to each creature and player kind of thing. Um, Taralf doesn't necessarily want that. Not that it's bad. Um, it's just not as good as, like, Volcanic Offering tends to be good. Like, Shivan Meteor can be very good for this deck. You want the bigger damage numbers, where uh, Neheb just wants you to hit all the opponents at the same time. So so it'll be a fun little game if you're a burn player, if you want to figure out if you want to be running Taralf or Neheb. Because I do get questions like this a lot, my usual advice is just play the new one for a little while. It's good to change pace. It's good to see something new. If you like the old one, you can always go back to it. So, you know, until you're able to answer that question of who's better, Taralf or Neheb, uh, I would just play the new one, get a feel for it, and if there's some things you don't like about it, sure, switch back. But anyway, yeah, Taralf has been incredibly impressive uh, as a card, it just takes so little to do so much. One burn spell, and things get wild. So, anyway, that's pretty much the game. Like I said, I did change this deck list around a little bit before this game. Made it a bit more all-in combo. I really dropped the creature count. I think it went from, like, 15 to 8, so... You know, not really a well-balanced deck any longer. It's just very similar to a lot of the Neheb decks, which are all in combo, do the thing, win the game, hope no one interacts with you, hope there's nothing you have to interact with that causes major problems. That's where it's at right now. I'm sure there's definitely ways to tinker with it to make it probably a little more well-balanced, but... Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have one new Patreon supporter in Derek Broad. Derek, you are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which Kaldheim decks you want me to play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.